Okay, for lab number one, you will need to use a meter stick. Okay, listen to the directions. I'm gonna go through it really quick. Listen to directions so you can get this, these things done. I, th I think I'm gonna give you like a half an hour or so to get things done. It's very simple, very straightforward. So in the lab manual, if you write on the side of the table so you can remember, table number one, just write down, use dominant hand. Use dominant hand. How will you know, or how do you know which one is your dominant? Uh, basically, which hand do you write with most of the time? If a lot of people are right-handed, then that's your dominant hand. But some people are left-handed, then your left hand. Another way to figure it out is, if I throw a baseball at you right now, which hand will save your life? Um, I better use my right hand, otherwise my left hand, you're gonna hurt, hurt me in my head, because I won't be able to catch it. That's another way. Now there are some people that can do both hands. Anyone here with that? Good, because I usually kick you out. No, just kidding, all right? So that's the whole idea. Table one is you're gonna gather data using your dominant hand. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Table number three, you can guess non-dominant hand. Table number four is gonna summarize the data. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. If you're listening, you'll be able to do it without any questions. This is one of the most important things you need to do in lab, is listen to the directions. Because once we break into groups, I want you to get things done. And, but if you still have questions, of course you ask me. We always use the centimeters, yeah. Say it. Table three, I'll show you what you do with it. Hang in there. Um, we always use the centimeter scale. We never use the inches in science, okay? So centimeter scale. All right, so what, what you're gonna do is, every, it looks like everybody has four ma lab ma members, at least even number. If not, we'll deal with it. So for example, you will be the catcher and you will be the thrower. And then you will switch, okay? So subject one will be you. Subject two will be you. Subject three, subject four. You see that? So one and three will be catching, while two and four will be throwing. You'll understand, hang in. And then they will switch. Two and four will be catching, and one and three will be throwing. And then they will exchange data between each other. Then you'll have four sets of data to fill lab table one. What do I mean by catching and throwing? The catcher is gonna be sitting down on the chair. The thrower is gonna be standing up. And the catcher will have the thumb and the index finger out like this. And the thrower will hold the meter stick like this. And without telling the, the catcher, I'm about to throw it. No, no, don't. Just hold it like that and then release it, and then they'll catch it. And that's gonna be called reaction time. We're measuring your reaction to the throw. How fast can you catch the meter stick? Okay? So you're gonna do that 10 times, and then you record the number, 14 centimeters. So if, the, if that was 14 for you, you would record 14 as the first catch. Then you do it again. 23 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and so forth. And then once you're done, 10 catches, 10, 10 throws. Once you're done, you are reversing roles. And now you're filling subject two's data while you guys are doing the same thing. The problem is this. What are you measuring? You're measuring distance. But what am I asking you to do? Reaction time. How is this time? Well, you're gonna use the graph. You know, you asked me about table two, right? We're not gonna use table two. We're actually gonna use this graph right here, which I produced from the table two data. So I took the table two data, put it in Excel, and produced this graph. So what you're gonna do in the table is that after you gather the data, you're gonna average the distance of the throws. And how do you do that? You add all 10 throws 
and divide by 10, the number of throws. And that gives you the average distance. But then you use that number to convert it to seconds. So let's say, for example, the average distance was 30 centimeters. What you're going to do is you're going to come up here near the um, screen, or you have a copy of it. I put it in the supplemental files in lab one module, or I will leave this up here for you. But you can take, go to 30, go all the way up until you run into the blue line and go across, and that converts to 0.25 seconds. That's how you do that. And you record that under reaction time. You only do that for the average. So then you will have your reaction time, she will have her reaction time, and so forth. Okay, listen carefully. The data from table one, the, the reaction times, you will copy over to table four under control reaction. All you're doing is copying the numbers from that table to this table, that's all. You will do the same thing for table three, is it three? Yeah, table three, but with your other hand with your non-dominant hand. So a lot of people think or hypothesize that my dominant hand is gonna be quicker. That's a good hypothesis. Some people may say, no, no, my non-dominant hand will be quicker. That's fine too. Some people will say, it won't have, there will be no effect. That's okay too. The idea is, show me. And that's what we're doing. So you're gonna do the non-dominant hand in table three, take the data and put it under the experimental in table four. And then I want you to do one other thing. I want you to create another column at the end of table four. If you wanna do that now, you can to remind you. Create another column at the end of table four and that will be for the averages of these data point, the, the values. So you're gonna average the reaction time with your dominant hand, and you're gonna average the reaction time with your non-dominant hand, and these are the two numbers that you're gonna finally compare. If they're both 0.2 seconds and 0.2 seconds, then there's no effect. If your dominant hand is 0.2 seconds, and your non-dominant hand is 0.9 seconds, then your dom dominant hand is quicker. Are you catching that? If your dominant hand caught the ruler in 0.2 seconds, and your non-dominant hand <coughs> needed 0.9 seconds, then your dominant hand is quicker. And the other way around too. So once you get the final, final two numbers, I don't care if you answer these two questions, don't, you don't have to. You just make a final statement, a conclusion statement. What do you conclude? I therefore conclude my dominant hand is quicker than my non-dominant hand, that's fine. I therefore conclude there's no effect. And so, that's fine, it doesn't matter, it depends on your data. And remember, you have to go back and visit the hypothesis. Where are you gonna make, they here, right here. Right here. You have to write, answer some questions over here. So listen to the directions, we're about to start. Um, the questions on the bottom of page five, you do not have to do. The group knowledge and all that. On top of page six, it asks you to think of three experiments that you can do with this meter stick. I just gave you one. Right hand versus left hand, am I right? That is called dexterity. So the experiment is, I am testing dexterity against reaction time. Everybody is doing that one. So go ahead, write that in. I am testing dexterity against reaction time. <clears throat> or you can say, I am testing dominant hand versus non-dominant hand versus reaction time. Good. And that's because everybody's doing that. But then the question asks you, if you were a scientist, what else would you test with it? Well, I'll give you some examples and you can write them down. 
I can, just looking at the group here, I can test male versus female. So I can test gender versus reaction time. I wonder if the women are quicker or the men are quicker. That, that, that would be a good experiment. Young versus old. Age. Oh my God, you can go crazy with that, right? You can go crazy with how many ways you can test for this. Athlete versus non-athlete. For example, think about it. If you were a tennis player, and I challenge you with this, do you think you have any, would you have any problems with it? No. <clears throat> think of what professional ten tennis players do. They react at a ball, to a ball coming at them at 150 miles an hour. And they return it. This will be no problem for them. Or a baseball player hitting a ball, hopefully home run, when a pitcher pitches at him at 110 miles an hour. That's pretty good. I wouldn't be able to do that. I get strikes out all the time. I wouldn't be able to catch that and hit that. No way. So athletes, people like baseball players or tennis players, this challenge would be nothing for them. I would actually, if I'm doing reaction time based on yoga, I would actually ask, are there any tennis players in here? If you raise your hand, I would actually have to remove you because you're gonna ruin the data. Unless I'm doing athletes versus non-athletes. I can even do coffee drinkers versus non-coffee drinkers. How's that? Coffee drinkers, sometimes they walk around like this because there's too much coffee. So they're gonna have a harder time catching the ruler. You see what I mean? So you can think of so many different things. It's up to you. I want everyone to write dexterity as the answer. The other two, I don't care what you do. I already gave you some answers. Now listen to the directions. So again, so we can get started here. Listen carefully. The rest of the questions on page number six has to do with the dexterity experiment. Everything else has to do with the one that we're doing. When they ask you to write a null hypothesis, it's based on the dexterity experiment. Null hypothesis is your hypothesis stated in the negative. And I'll give, I, I can't avoid giving you the answer because I have to explain it to you. An example of that would be, dexterity has no effect on reaction time. That's the null hypothesis. It has to be stated in the negative. The alternate hypothesis is the opposite of the null hypothesis. Are we catching it? So which one word do I remove from there? The no. In the null hypothesis, I said, dexterity has no effect on reaction time. The alternate hypothesis would be, dexterity has an effect on reaction time. It's that simple. And then they want you to state the same hypothesis in the if-then format. If I do whatever, then this is going to happen. They also follow through and ask you, in that experiment, what is the dependent variable? What is the independent variable? Talk it out with your lab partners. They ask you, um, what variable will be controlled during the experiment? That means, what variable are you going to keep constant? Now, you got to understand something. In today's experiment, your numbers are not going to be very accurate. Because you're technically about 28 random people off the street here. That's not how we do research. To do research, we have to either have a group of women in the room or a group of men. If I'm testing left versus, right versus left, I can't be using men and women in the same room because gender can also be having an effect in the, in the background. The real experiment would be, I would control gender. That means I will only have men in the room or only women in the room if I'm testing dexterity. I will only have athletes in the room or non-athletes in the room and so forth. So you can think of so many things. I would control gender. I would control whether you're a coffee drinker or not, athlete or not, age. And, you can go crazy with that too. Just give me two of them. The lighting. 
Imagine if the, the light on this side of the room is working, but over there they're all burnt out. That can affect the reaction time because you simply can't see the ruler coming down. You see? So in, in research, when I did the blood pressure on the rats, I had to control the, the temperature of the room, the humidity of the room, the lighting of the room, the amount of food they ate, the amount of water they ate, their body weight, their gender. I had to control everything, keep everything constant, except for one thing. Which one is that? The independent variable, the salt. I mean, there's no way I can do that with you guys. How am I gonna only test your right versus left hand if you're just 28 random people off the street here? That's not possible. So know that the data that you're gonna get today is not gonna be accurate. You guys may have an effect at the end and you guys may not, and so forth. But the idea here is not accuracy, don't worry about that. It's all about practicing the scientific method. The last question asks you how many measurements are you gonna make? 10 drops per hand in about one minute. All right, good.